Is there no one worthy to set us free?
turning your Bibles to James chapter 3, I'd like to talk to you about the subject, the importance of godly wisdom. This is so important today because you see very little of it today. That's why you see chaos, uh, confusion, uncertainty, because there's not a lot of godly wisdom that's going on. A young boy once approached his father and asked his dad, Dad, why does the wind blow? The father responded, I don't know, son. Well, Dad, where did the clouds come from? Now, I'm not sure, son. Well, what makes the rainbow, Dad? I have no idea. Dad, do you mind me asking you all these questions? Dad says, not at all, son. How, do you, how are you going to learn if you don't ask? <laughs> We're living in a day when knowledge is just increasing so exponentially and um, it's hard to even keep up with it. With the advent of the internet, everything's out there today, all the books digitally reproduced and you can read anything. And so you can hardly keep up with the massive amount of information that's produced each and every day, actually, let alone in the past. A lot of knowledge, a lot of information, facts, but if it's not intertwined with godly wisdom, um, you still end up with confusion and chaos. And we'll read this verse of Scripture in just a moment. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray your blessing upon this reading and studying of your word today. Help us, Lord, to be able to sort through the confusion that's out there and understand why it's so important to have the wisdom of God that we can make sense of life, where we're going, and how to get there in the best way. And, Father, what pleases you? And so, Father, if there's, there's any here today that maybe are struggling with some areas or decisions in their own life, I pray that you'll bless them today and help them to come to that proper decision. If there's those here that are uh, wrestling with uh, their eternal security and eternal salvation, I pray that today they would give their life to Jesus Christ. So bless our service today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. In, in James chapter 3, verse 13 through 18, let's read that quickly. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Uh, he, here we see the Word of God tells us that there are two wisdoms. One is from above, one comes from God, and there is this wisdom of the world, worldly wisdom. And uh, it's, it's apart from God. It's man's wisdom. It comes from, uh, it comes from sinful man. And as they think in their hearts... The Bible says so they are, and they come up with their own conclusions. It's like evolution. We can take that for an example. Um, that's apart from God's wisdom. Uh, that keeps God out of the equation. And so man has to come up with some device or some understanding of how everything got here, regardless of how ridiculous it is. And so this goes on in all aspects of life and science and so on. 
when you leave God out, you have to come up with something else. And, and as a result, as life goes on and you keep adding confusion to confusion to confusion, you get the insanity. <laughs> and I sometimes wonder if we're not really getting close to that today. Knowledge must include God's wisdom. We need to understand the importance of godly wisdom. And until people change who are in a position to implement a certain change, it will not happen. I guess it could start at the grassroots again. If people would give their lives to Christ and get into the word of God and begin to understand, hey, this is right and this is wrong, this is good, this is bad and begin to sound off about it, it could, it could change from the grassroots up, but it's so much more effective if it can start at the top. That's why we need to pray for Washington, that those people get saved in Washington, Congress, legislature, all that judicial system, all of it. They need to be saved. They need to give their life to Christ and um, ask God for godly wisdom in order to... Uh, get back to where we were. What happens to a country, to a people uh, who try to operate without godly wisdom? Well, let me just quickly mention a few things very quickly. Knowledge without God's wisdom becomes a source of temptation. Say, what do you mean by that? Well, you go all the way back to the Garden of Eden. And, you know, God told Adam and Eve, you know, you got all these trees that you can eat from, and, but just one you can't. Because if you do, you'll surely die. And so everything was clear. They had, all, you know, hard, hard to tell how many thousands of trees they could have eaten from. Uh, but Satan comes to Eve and says, Hath God really, did he really say this? Are you sure what he said? And above all, does he really mean what he says? In other words, he, he wanted Eve to cast doubt on what God had said. No, God was very clear. <laughs> he just, you can eat of all these other trees, but you just don't eat of this one. Because there's a consequence. There's a deadly consequence if he eat of this tree. Very simple instructions. I mean, anybody could have followed that instruction. Matter of fact, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 4, the Bible says, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Well, wait a second. God said she would die. Why should I believe you, Mr. Serpent? For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. I'm saying to you, once you leave godly wisdom and start listening to earthly wisdom, it'll lead to temptation. What happened? He suggested to her that she could become like God or as the gods. Well, that's a temptation. You see, Satan, Lucifer, wanted to be as God or above God, quite honestly. He, he had the same problem. And he tried to exalt himself above the throne of God. God kicked him out of heaven. Now, he's doing the same thing at Eve. If you'll listen to me, you can become, as he says, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. How wonderful it would have been not to know about evil. Can you imagine that? What good is there in knowing evil? Aren't you, won't you be glad when you get to heaven and there will be no more evil? You won't even have to deal with it. It would be so wonderful. And so what happens is earthly wisdom leads you into temptation. And here's where we get messed up in this world. Here's what the world suggests. You want to succeed? Go for money. Make Make, uh, make money your goal. What about power? 
Get somewhere where you can get it power. That's why Washington just, they, they thrive on power in Washington. Your own goal. Fame. I want to be famous. I want everybody to know me. Of course, in fame usually comes wealth as well. The problem is, is following a worldly wisdom will lead to problem after problem after problem. And those that seek their goal as far as money or power or fame usually have far more problems than you and I might have. Oh, when you see them, they're smiling and they're wearing the best clothes and, and they're eating at the best restaurants and driving in the finest cars. But behind the scenes, they're having a terrible time in life because they don't know godly wisdom. And uh, you see, if God tells us that something is good for us, it's best that we simply believe him. But we have to get to that point where we can do that. I'd rather go along with what God says, this is good this is bad. Even if I have to say, God, I don't understand why that's bad. It could have been the same thing with Eve. What's wrong with that tree? I don't see anything bad about the tree. The fruit, matter of fact, it looks exceedingly delicious. You see, he didn't say there was something bad about the tree. He simply says, don't eat of the tree. Well, why? Because I said, my dad used to tell me that. Just do it because I told you. Yeah, some of your dads told you the same thing. Just trust me. It's bad for you. Don't, don't mess around with it. And so when you think about it, I mean, it's not like some terrible thing that you know, is, is there and is ugly and awful. Matter of fact, the fruit was looked great. But God simply put a prohibition, said don't do it. That one tree. And then Satan comes along and says, hey, with a little worldly wisdom, this thing, if you eat of this tree, it will make you better. You'll become as gods. And so it is with the world. Satan waves the money out there, the fame, the fortune, um, position, uh, fun, enjoyment, pleasure. Go for it. And people go for it constantly without, and they can be very brilliant people. They've got the finest education, great degrees, and yet they just don't have godly wisdom to realize, hey, this isn't good. This is not going to end well. And that's where we're going in our country. They just cannot see the end of where it's going to end up. And so, without godly wisdom, wisdom from above, it becomes a source of temptation. And so people begin to think like that. Matter of fact, families are ruined because people are trying to get more money or get more things or more toys, more power. And homes are ruined and children's lives are ruined and, and so on. As a matter of fact, people can ruin their own lives by pressing for something that God doesn't even want them to have anyway. But also notice knowledge without God's wisdom makes us presume to know more than God. It makes us presume to know more than God. Most people today believe that they know better than God. We all have to be careful of that. Really got to be careful of that. Satan can get in there so easily and say, well, I know what the Bible says, but. It's the same thing Satan Pulled on Eve. Well, I know what God said, but. That wisdom did not come from God. That's earthly, sensual 
worldly wisdom. And most of our world is run on worldly wisdom today. Most people believe that real happiness comes from following their own understanding. When in fact that's not true because the Bible is very clear. Proverbs 3, 5, a very familiar passage of scripture. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. You see, the flesh always deceives us into thinking that we know better than God. Surely, God, you, don't, you wouldn't mind if I did this. And surely, my God, you don't care if I miss this service or that service or, um, or whatever. I was reading something the other day where somebody was talking about, are you going back to church? No, I'm enjoying these online services. Yeah, that's not coming from heaven. Uh, that's worldly wisdom. I think I'll just kind of sit here. I, I remember years ago, and talk, I was inviting a guy to come to church. He says, oh, I fish on Sundays. I said, why don't you fish on Monday <laughs> or Saturday? Oh, he said, I can worship God out here. Yeah, right. I know you're worshiping God and uh, on, on, in your boat uh, out on the lake at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. Um. You know, we think we know better than God. Like somehow God is fooled with us. God knows exactly what we're doing. He knows we're putting pleasure before God. He knows that. We're not trusting in the Lord with all our heart. Satan lied to Eve and Satan will still continue to lie to us today. We do not know more than God. And wise is the person who takes the word of God, opens it up, and lives by it. Day after day after day makes their decisions by it, follows it, implements it into their home, uh, gets the whole household to follow the word of God. That family is going to enjoy life far much better than the person who tries to follow their own understanding. So it often makes us to presume that we know more than God. World, worldly wisdom will do that. That's why Hollywood, you can't talk to them about moral issues. You're watching Hollywood become more immoral week after week after week, and they're going to continue that way. Unless something happens, some revival happens in the world, uh, people are just using worldly wisdom to run this country. And then also, knowledge without God's wisdom increases the chance of pride in the heart. In 1 Corinthians 8, 1, it says, Now as touching things offered unto idols, for we know that we have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. I don't know, I've tried to witness to people who are highly educated, and that's a, quite a chore. Why? Because they think they know, number one, more than you. And often they don't even believe in God. And if they did, they think they know more than God. And it's often difficult to deal with the very, very intelligent class of people. And so they will, with their higher education begin to spurn the gospel, laugh you to scorn. Like, you don't believe that. How many times, if you've talked to anybody about the Lord, they may have said this, well, I don't need a crutch. Maybe you need a crutch. I don't need a crutch. But if, if God is your crutch, that's fine. I just don't need a crutch. And you sit there and say, boy, you know, it's amazing, the patience of God. You know, I'd be afraid to do that. I'd be afraid God would strike my health right now. Uh, but they, again, they're beyond godly wisdom. They're just using 
their own worldly wisdom of I can make it, I can get by, I'm my own man, I'm my own woman, uh, I, make, I make everything happen. Don't have the foggiest idea of what's going on in the world from God's point of view and how tragic it is. Why? Because they're proud. They have become so proud that they can't, uh, they can't comprehend truth. Their education becomes their God, thinking that they have it all figured out and they can handle it all alone. You know, we're seeing that today in young people. More and more young couples are cohabiting. Uh, what they don't understand, though, is that if they ever get married, 80% of those who cohabit before marriage will divorce. That's the statistic. 80%. Far greater than the ones who don't. Children left to themselves <clears throat> often will break your heart. Pride will take our attention elsewhere from our families. It will get us involved in all kinds of other areas that inflate our egos. And the next thing is our families suffer. We're seeing the alternative lifestyles come along. Always popular right now, but it will bring unhappiness and despair in time. But the thing is, pride blinds a person from seeing the truth. And more and more people are filled with pride today. The Bible says in Psalms 10.4, the wicked through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all of his thoughts, Psalms 10.4. It's the pride of his countenance that keeps him from seeking God, the Bible says. Proverbs 29.23, a man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Boy, we all have the choices to make. And we can think we're something, but be careful. In God's eyes, God favors the humble. Why? Because God can work in and through the humble. He can't work through a proud person. That's why he has to break them. And God has ways to do that. Proverbs 16.5, everyone that is, a, that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. And so, over and over again, we see people operating without the wisdom of God. And they make mistakes. This is why a country is going down. It was founded on Bible principles. And as we stray away from the Bible principles and begin to apply worldly wisdom, we make poor decisions, and our country is going to continue to go downhill. It's just the way it is. Those guys can sit there in those ivory towers and have their think tanks and, and all they can go on forever and ever and think they've got it all figured out. Without God, we don't have a chance. Boy, we need to get back to understanding that. But once you apply wisdom, godly wisdom, to your life, you see life totally different. Let's look at a few things like that. Number one, knowledge combined with God's wisdom recognizes Jesus Christ as the source of truth. Well, the, the world doesn't see that. But Christians do. Once they start looking to God and seeking God's wisdom, it becomes so clear. Jesus Christ and his sacrifice on Calvary becomes so clear. You can't miss it. 2 Corinthians 4, 6, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Wise is the person who trusts Jesus as their Savior. 
My friend, there is no heaven without him. But there is a hell without him. If you're here today and you've never given your life to Christ, do it today. Seek the wisdom that comes from above. Seek that which it comes from God. You see, the wisdom of God will teach you that salvation is in Jesus Christ. That's why it's important to raise your children in Sunday school. Allow them to sing that great song, Jesus loves me, this I know, because the Bible tells me so. What's the Bible say about him? It talks about how he went to Calvary for them and their sins. How he gave his life for them. How he loves them. He wants to take care of them and watch over them and take them to heaven someday. Children will see that and it makes sense. The greatest thing anybody can do is give their life to Christ. And once you do it, you truly saved, you realize you made the most important decision of your life. Those who trust in themselves are simply blinded to the foolishness of their weakness. They made you reject Jesus Christ, but down deep inside they're empty. They don't know where to find the answer. Even though you just shared the answer with them, and it's in the person of Christ Jesus, they reject that, they refuse that, they, will, they don't want the light. And they'll walk away, still proud, hey, I rejected that, but still empty. And how tragic it is. When you combine God's wisdom with your knowledge, the word of God is seen as absolute in its teachings. It's wonderful to know that I hold the word of God in my hand. And I can depend upon it. It's accurate in every regard. And it's all going to be fulfilled exactly as it has been laid out. You can trust it. In uncertain times, it's like Eve. Boy, how she should have just simply said, I've got two words here. I've got God's word and I have the serpent's word. Whose word am I going to listen to? It's, it's, it's all boiled down to that. Who am I going to listen to? God said, I'll die. He says, I won't. Who am I going to trust? Boy, wise is the person who trusts God. It's, 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 it's suicide to trust in ourselves or somebody else that's just sharing worldly wisdom or their own, their own thinking. That's how cults are formed. There's people out there that are hurting. They're, they're hungering for something, and a, and a cult-like figure will come along and uh, tell them what they want to hear. and They'll follow that person to the end of the world. But to their own detriment, they're never going to find the happiness that they sought for. You see, the Word of God is absolute in its teaching. God, in His great wisdom, gave us the Word of God as the source of absolute knowledge and truth. Boy, how I wish our officials would get back to honoring that. Our schools would get back to teaching it. The world's lost its direction by leaving the truth of the Bible and believing in the intelligence of men. Once you believe in the intelligence of men, that leads to manipulation. Once I trust man and his opinion, then he can manipulate me. And they do it all the time. I listen to these politicians. They're going to tell you why they're doing this and why they're doing that. That's not the reason they're doing it at all. That's a cover story. They're spinning it. They're telling you something that they think you'll enjoy hearing, when in fact they've got a total another agenda for doing what they're doing. And people cannot see that. They're being manipulated. And it's tragic. Because the world is run by worldly wisdom today. You want to get back to godly wisdom, it's right in the Word of God. Open the Bible. And without the direction from God, mankind will regress to its lowest level. You just write it down. 
unless there's a change in our country, we're going to continue to go down, down, down until we're totally defeated. I'm praying that there'll be a change. I'm praying that God can step in any time he wants to and he can do something. He can change anything. So never give up, all right? Sometimes it looks like the devil's got you. But as long as God's on the throne, no, he doesn't. God can overthrow the devil and his plan and his worldly wisdom anytime he wants to, just like he did in Nineveh. Nineveh was going to be destroyed, but Jonah went, didn't he? And Jonah preached a short little message. And Nineveh repented, and God spared Nineveh, all the people there. God could do the same thing for America. We just have to get back to the Word of God and its teachings. So stay in the Bible. Continue to go to the worship services. Read books. Read your Bible. Get into study, have some study time. You can't go wrong because it's the, we get our wisdom from God Almighty. And then the Bible tells us also in James, if, if any of us lack wisdom, we are to pray and ask God for it, who will give it to you graciously. You know, here's what happens. Turn to a, a verse of Scripture, Romans one twenty two. Here's what happens when we turn down the Bible and godly wisdom. Because that's what they did in Romans chapter 1. Romans 1, 22. And this is where we are today. Professing themselves to be wise... They became fools. <laughs> now, isn't that amazing? Romans one twenty two. And if you look at verse 21, because that when they knew God, in other words, you could see the evidence of God, and we can see the evidence of God all around us. We know God exists. In other words, when they knew God and knew that he existed, that there was a God, there is order, there is intelligence, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. And yet, they went about professing themselves to be wise, and in doing so, they became fools. And that's what we see much today as we look around the country and we see that what's going on in our laws and our systems and so on, their schools. They profess themselves as being the wisest person in the world. And yet you look and say, what, no, what a foolish, foolish decision. And so it's just a matter of rejecting God in his word and the wisdom of his word. Nothing ever gets better as you go away from God and his word. Thirdly, when you include the wisdom of God with our knowledge, it increases the, I'm sorry, the fear of God is essential in departing from sin. We begin to understand that. That's important that men and women have a fear of, of God. I got to thinking about that when I was looking at this portion of Scripture. Why is the fear of God so important? I got to thinking about the fear of God. Oh, it's not a matter of, you know, is he going to beat me up and what's he going to do to me? But there's a deeper underlying th thought that came to my mind. If I fear God, it means that I take him seriously. If I don't fear him, then I don't really take him seriously. 
And so the people that don't fear God really don't take God seriously. Now, I don't know where you are, but you better take God seriously because he takes us seriously. All that happened to Jesus Christ happened because of you and for me. That's how seriously he takes us. And I find that the people who fear God, who have a healthy respect and all of God, take him seriously. They're concerned about how he sees them, what he thinks of them. Are they honoring him? Are they obeying him? Is he pleased with them? See, these are the thoughts that go through people's minds who really fear God. How does God see me? Is he pleased with me today? The Bible says in Proverbs 16.6, By mercy and truth iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Proverbs 16, 6. By the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Why? Because I respect God, and he cares for me enough, and he cares for his children enough that he's not going to allow them to wade out in dangerous waters He's going to correct them. He's going to bring them back. And I know he takes, takes us seriously. And he's going to deal with us if we lose sight of the wisdom that he wants us to, to have and to maintain our lives. The world's growing sicker as we speak. Hollywood, pop music, plays, all filled with nudity, profanity. Pedophiles are preying on young kids on the internet. Homosexuality is growing as a fad among young people. Like I said, couples are living together outside of marriage. I just read it. I turned my computer on the other day. And you got MSN as a home page, and it has these pictures and news items. Philadelphia is going to have their annual nude bicycle run. I thought, what? Yeah, on August something, I don't know, August 11th, everybody wants to join, can, and it's okay. You just get naked and get on your bicycle and join this big parade going down the street. What? I don't care what the cause is, it's insane. And yet it's okay. Somehow they got a permit. Who in the world's running the city? I tell you what, their wisdom's not coming from God. But this goes on and on, city after city after city. They're making terrible, terrible decisions. There's not one bit of help to society in our culture. which, of course, is leading to more and more hatred, wars, violence. It's all spreading across America, across our planet. Earthquakes, storms, hurricanes, heat waves. We're seeing increase in all of that. Why? Because wickedness is continuing to increase. See, those without God's wisdom don't understand the problem. They're looking at greenhouse gases. They should be looking at the human heart. That's the problem. You want to get to the core of the problem. It's not greenhouse gases. It's not having to tax us, a, you know, whatever, how many trillions of dollars a year to find the solution to this. Hey, just get the gospel in the hearts and minds of people. Get the word of God out there. Get some godly wisdom where they can see it. The worst thing they can do is shut it off. It's the worst thing they can do. But then again, that's why men are, that's why God warns against trusting in your own confidence. It'll always lead you astray. Why? Because we're sinners. 
We cannot make proper decisions. That's why we need God and the Holy Spirit and the Word of God directing and guiding us each and every day. And so the world goes on in the wrong direction. But thank God with godly wisdom, we can have order and we can have sanity. Those who know their Bibles realize that we are fulfilling the prophecies outlined in the Bible. Matthew 24, 36, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Well, what was it like in Noah's day? Well, the Bible is clear. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart were only evil continually. That's where we're going to continue to go, unless there is a change in people's hearts. 2 Peter 2, 5, And God spared not the old world, but saved Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon a world of the ungodly. They didn't see it coming. They couldn't perceive it. They didn't have the wisdom. In their own hearts and minds, they're thinking, surely God wouldn't kill us. No, it can't be right. They could not see their own sin. They could not see their own lawlessness and the violence and the hatred and all that was going on. They couldn't see it. See, the fear of God will help a person depart from evil. If God says he's going to judge sin, we better believe that he's going to judge sin. Now, sin can be fun. There's no question about it. The, the sin nature loves it. It loves sin. But God says, you better hadn't go there. You had better hadn't go there. Because you're going to hurt yourself, you're going to hurt somebody. And not only the fact is you're following Satan. And God wants you for himself. He wants to love you and he wants you to love him back. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. 2 Corinthians 7 1. Boy, the fear of God will help us to depart from evil. Well, where, how do I get that? I have to have godly wisdom to say, you know, God, you're exactly right. Because if I do it on my own and I think, well, I think I can do that and get away with it. You'll just start me down a path, and it'll start you down a path that you don't want to go. Because at some point, the destroyer is going to hurt, destroy our lives. And lastly, with godly wisdom added to our knowledge, we understand that living for eternity far outweighs living for the present. You know, when you think, think about it, Would you really be, give, be willing to give up the present for the future? I'm so glad that I enjoy life every day, okay? Uh, we're so fortunate in America. Some people are in jail cell, cells and um, are in terrible, terrible, terrible conditions. But the fact is, if you gave up everything good in your life, for eternity in heaven, it would have been worth the sacrifice. Say, so, okay, I'll give up all this good, however many years it is, for eternity with the Lord. It would have been worth it. But how fortunate are we? We get to enjoy life each and every day here. Get to enjoy our family and our friends and do things. We're freedom to go from here to across the United States if we want to. God gives us all of this and still offers us eternity. It's remarkable. So why don't we obey God? It's because we don't fear him. We need to get back to fearing God, respecting God, honoring God, caring what he says, 
obeying him when you and I maybe say, oh, I don't think that's important. God thinks it's important. If he wrote it in the word of God, he thinks it's important. He says, do it. You'll get the best life if you do it. The wisdom of God will impress upon you the importance of preparing for eternity. So many people live with no, no thought of eternity. The Bible says, God who will have all men to be saved to come to the knowledge of the truth. How many people today going through life lost, they don't even think about eternity. They don't think about dying. They don't think about where they're going to spend eternity. They don't care. Satan has them blinded. I love those verses, and this is life eternal, that they might know the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. But the real question is found in Matthew sixteen twenty six: For what shall a man profiteth if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? You see, knowledge without godly wisdom will lead a person to a life of vanity and an eternity without Christ and without, and without heaven. If there's ever a day when America needs to get back to godly wisdom in their decision-making, it is today. And I trust that they will. But it has to start with the hearts. They'll never see it outside of God changing their hearts, truly changing their hearts. Not them going around saying, I'm a Christian, I belong to such and such a church. No, they have to have given their life to Christ and submitted their will to God's will. When God has charge of your life, then he's able to change you and make you into something wonderful. And then you can pass that on to somebody else. You can make godly and wise decisions. We need that in our homes today, in our daily living, the decisions that you make each and every day. Maybe your search for knowledge has led you into temptation. Another pleasure, another moment of fun. And the next thing is, is you're faced with temptation that God never wanted you to have to face. Possibly, you may presume to know more than God. Many people do. Pride may be keeping you from returning to God and his word. I hope not. If you find pride in your life, get rid of it immediately and humble yourself before almighty God and say, God, I need you every hour. I need you every hour. Stand with me, please. I'll stay in the old time way. Yeah.